you know, you grew up without your father. Do you know that, that he had alcoholic uh, dependency and he took his own life? I was like, what? How old were you when you found My this out? My father committed a suicide when I was four and I figured out when I was 18. 18. At that point, it was like as if somebody took a rug and swept it under my feet and every, everything I knew about my life was suddenly a lie. There comes a time in every believer's life where they have their moment, where they devote their life to Jesus. What was that moment for you? Well, for me, it was a moment when I realized that I desperately need a father that I never had and uh, a mind-blowing realization that he is my father, that he was always there for me. It's the moment when I fell on my knees and I cried and I said, well, if you are our father in heaven, I need you. I never needed you more. If, if you exist, that's, that's, that's the point I need you to, 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 to show yourself. That's the moment I need you in my life. And he showed himself to you? Yeah. That, uh, I was, at that point, I was broken and uh, desperate and feeling lost and it was a deep, deep realization that he, he was there in that moment with me. He was standing above me with his hands on my shoulders. It, it was kind of, there was a long process leading to that point, but in that point, he, he was there 100% with me. and. Uh, and I was never waiting for the answer. It was I just cried out, and, uh, and my life just started changing. He, as if he was standing behind the door, hiding, waiting for me to to invite him. And the moment I I did, it just he burst into my life, doing everything he was waiting to, telling me everything I was where I needed to hear, changing things, guiding my life to the direction that. Uh, that he prepared for me. It yes. was that feeling. <laughs> so you got to this point. Mm -hmm. But in order to get to this point, you went through a lot. How does a Jewish guy like yourself come to realize that Jesus is the Messiah, your Savior, and God is your Father? How do you, how do you come to this? What, what, tell me about your childhood. So I grew up in a secular family. I, uh, I was born in, uh, back then it was the Soviet Union. Um, I never knew that I was Jewish up till quite late uh, point in my life that never religion, God, faith never c showed up as a, as a topic. My grandmother came from a Karaiti family. Uh, it's, a, it's a branch of, uh, Ju uh, in Judaism that actually sticks to reading only the, uh, the books of the, of the Bible, the original mm -hmm. ones, and not taking any rabbinical interpretation. Mm -hmm. But that was not a topic, and that was not an issue in the family. That was a normal Soviet family. My, the, the backstage of my childhood looked sometimes similar to some of the places here. Uh, it, was, it was a hard time in, uh, in the Soviet Union, financially. Also, uh, many things were kind of, the buildings were crumbling down or the life conditions. Some, there was a, it was a kind of feeling that you're living in a shadow of some other <laughs> uh, times. But uh, in my family, on one hand, I grew up in an atmosphere of love. I felt loved by by my mother, my grandmother and grandfather. On the other hand, I grew up without a father. My father, uh, he was addicted to, uh, to alcohol. He, was, he had a heavy drinking problem and he ended up taking his own life. Mm. Um, when I was four years old, wow. and uh, and I never, I, I grew up not knowing this. I grew up just without the father. From age uh, three, my father disappeared from my life. Uh, they, um, my parent, uh, my mother told me that he died. Uh, I remember as a four-year-old child, heartbroken and crying over this, but. I, I think I was told that he, he had a disease or something, but it was kind of a topic you would not talk about. Do you have any memory of him? I have uh, very little memories of him. I most, most, some of them probably reconstructed from the photos I have with him. Okay. But that's something, but the feeling of missing that figure in my, uh, in my life never went away. Um, 
I do remember growing up wishing I would have a father. I felt very much my mother did an amazing job raising me in the, in the atmosphere of love and, and compassion and trying to give everything she could. She was working four jobs in order to provide for me. We were living in kind of the dormitory that was giving, given from the factory at which she was working. Uh, suddenly at the age of 10, my grandma starts talking about that we're going to move somewhere. They were going to Israel. Wow. Like, what, what's Israel? <laughs> what is it all about? It was just this, uh, the country I heard from the news. It was, and then she says, yeah, we're Jewish. And uh, yeah, and some of our relatives already made an Aliyah. And I really believe, and it was amazing because it was my grandmother that convinced all of her family it's time to move, that we cannot stay here anymore. It's better, there is a better future waiting for us there. So fast forwarding, I, we came to Israel. I went through a whole process of assimilating and growing up as a immigrant teenager in Israel. Came here when I was 11. And I felt that I need to gain my, uh, my position in the, uh, in, with the, in the group of friends within yeah. the class I was drawing. Yeah. That's something that I, as long as I remember myself, I was always drawing. Not, no, I can't yeah. say that it was. <laughs> you, you're holding your sketch pad there, your sketchbook. When did the drawing start, your creative, artistic expression? Well, I would love to say that it was always part of it. At least that's as much as I remember, I always enjoyed this. Uh -huh. I always, there was something that I could express myself through. I could, uh, uh, I could gain uh, attention of others through because the more I did it, the better I became naturally. But, but it was also, also something that I felt a great joy. I found a great joy. Uh, it could also be connected to the fact that I'm a single child and I was often, uh, often bored. So you like you find you find yourself entertaining with creating worlds, yeah. with like imagining and drawing and, and composing. Uh, but in Israel, it became a way of uh, of also earning love of others. So I would be like maybe the shy uh, kid in the class that hardly spoke Hebrew, but I could draw Leonardo DiCaprio for the girls, or I could make like a portrait of, of the of the guy that uh, and a bit exaggerate the muscles for him, like to to like me. So in a way that the, and uh, slowly from like being this uh, lonely kid, I became a teenager kind of. Uh, but but uh, this world of uh, of arts it kept on evolving in, in my life so it went from from just doodling in a notebook I started I got interested in street culture like graffiti mm -hmm. and we were hanging around and pa painting and about abandoned buildings and uh, looking for a cool spot to to write your name as big as possible that was another way of like shouting to the world like I'm here love me but but like there was like a special thrill in this also like I was looking for a community like it was like maybe a community of like the hip hop community of, of place of if you're good enough you'll be noticed and you kind of prove to yourself that that you're not by an accident here that yeah. you and uh, so a lot of my childhood. Uh, went from uh, going finding abandoned buildings for, as a spot to paint but also exploring so this place in many ways does remind me of this time of explore, uh, exploration of like finding something by accident and like okay that's the place let's yeah, turn we came, it to something different we came upon, upon this place this is the uh, yiddish theater here in the uh, central station of tel aviv mm -hmm. and we just happened upon it by accident it's right. really really amazing so from all this world of, uh, of creativity and art and all this, uh, it kind of became my idol, but or uh, but uh, in the same time was kind of praising me. I became the center of uh, the more I was doing this, the better I became, the better, the more I was convincing myself that that's what I should do in life. I should become um, a successful artist, uh, uh, not... Uh, not care about any anyone's opinion and I was very self-centered so when the time when I finished uh, high school and was the time for me to get drafted in the army that was uh, a point at which self-centered me I thought why do I need this why do I need to serve the country I want I want to invest in my career yeah. this, so I started looking for a uh, for a ways to to get out of this not not to invest now three years of my life which back then felt like a waste of time mm -hmm. so I started I, I uh, w went into, into onto this path of uh, trying to 
to, to prove that I'm mental and stable. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting with a psychologist in the army. I would come there, I would open my sketchbook and I would doodle while talking and all this. And, and yet it was not convincing. They, they, they invited me for one interview, for another, and then like, I need something better. And, and then I started exaggerating with all things of, uh, of like mental instability and suicidal thoughts. And yeah. I've, I've, as, as a, in method acting, you need to, to yourself to believe the role that you're playing, I was kind of playing this dangerous game also outside of the military base. Also at home, I was kind of uh, mentioning more and more often uh, dark humor jokes, suicidal uh, notes and this. And, uh, and, and then my grandma kind of understood that something's wrong here. So she called me once and said, well, if you don't want to serve in the army, I can, uh, I can give you some information that would help you. I'm not sure you're ready to hear it. I'm like, OK, what is it? She said, well, you know, you grew up without your father. Do you know that, that he had mental instability, that he was, uh, he had an uh, alcoholic uh, dependency and he took his own life? Mm. I was like, what? How old were you when you found My this My father committed a suicide when I was four and I figured out when I was 18. 18. At that point, it was like as if somebody took a rug and swept it under my feet and I was like, Okay, what does that mean? At that point, when, when the, in the army they heard about this, they said, okay, that's not something we want to deal with this. You don't want to go, just sign here and buy. I'm like, buy for now, buy for... Like, no, just don't come back anymore. And then suddenly I find myself in a room uh, alone and uh, every, everything I knew about my life was suddenly a lie. On the other hand, all those lies that I've been telling myself about like uh, the emptiness of existence and, uh, and this totally started taking over. So it was like, okay, God, if you're a father, I need you right now. There is like nothing else I see that can help me. And I just, I, f I, I kind of fell on my knees and I, and I just prayed and I said, if you're the father in heaven, and I need you. And at this point, I just felt him coming and touching me and uh, and being there for me uh, and and it's funny because the first time I heard about God was was not from a Jewish man it was a, he was a Christian man he was a friend of a family B back in Ukraine when I was 16 me and my mom we went uh, to for like a family visit and a friend that we were very close as families with them my best fr friend's father he basically he became an Orthodox Christian so he started talking to me about like questioning uh, like do you really think that everything in this world is just for no reason yeah there is no cause there is no effect that it just existing so when did he say this to you i was 16 back then okay and at that point something hit me like a rock like a deep realization that probably he's right but this thought scared the heck out of me i was i do remember myself like on that evening lying in my bed and crying because i kind of felt that it's true but from that point on it felt it felt way too distant to, to me i came back to israel after like a family trip back then uh, to my teenage life so like what does jesus has to do like jesus of the orthodox church yeah. has to do with with me being a young israeli uh, teenager uh, yeah. so deep inside i knew that is the truth but i never lived it as the truth it just kept on low going until at the uh, i found myself at the age of 18 like uh, in this vacuum of, of nothingness and in this moment, that the, my biggest, that's not luck, but, <laughs> but uh, what, what's saying is that he gave me like this little prayer book, the, the church prayer book that started with my father in heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, that was like a prayer book and ancient Russian uh, dialect, the church dialect. And, uh, and I never read past the first prayer there because it was a weird language for me, but the first prayer was our father in heaven. I never needed anything more than that. Mm. That was everything that God needed in order to enter my life. The moment I prayed and I said like, and, uh, and it's a, as if from that point, I, I could see that uh, there was his hand rebuilding my life as it's like a hand put in a puzzle. Suddenly I could see different things in my life in the history of, of my family that he was putting one piece after another, after another, after another. Suddenly you see a bigger picture. And then from, from that moment on, I found a uh, home group. 
Uh, I came to a home gr uh, to a group, I found the congregation, I started believing. My grandma saw that there was a change in me and she was very afraid of like the change. What was the was change like? Um, she saw that I'm like disappearing every Friday, I'm going somewhere, that, uh, that suddenly I started joking around things. So, so once we're standing on, in the kitchen and cooking together and she's asking, so tell me the truth. Uh, uh, so where are you going on Friday evening? So I'm saying, I'm going to a Messianic congregation. It's like, what is it? It's like a church, but it's uh, Jewish people there. And they just like, okay, yeah. So a few more weeks later, we were kind of in the same constellation. So, no, but tell me the truth. Where are you really going Friday evening? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm going to the church. Then another time she's entering my room and I'm building a mask for uh, for Purim play in, at the congregation. So I'm like, I'm, I'm very concentrated in like building a horse uh, with, with like ears and crumbling the paper and this is like, what are you doing? I'm saying, I'm, I'm making a mask for, for a Purim place. Like, a Purim in a church? What kind of sect kind are of you in? Is, yeah. So I started sharing. The grandmother was the first person I told about like my experience, started telling her about this. And, uh, and I saw that in her, something woke up because she grew up in a, f in, a, in a Jewish family, in a Karaiti Jewish family, that during the Soviet times that, that kind of all this thing got stolen from them. Like the, the, she survived, the, the, her fa family were hiding during the Holocaust and they, then when they came back to, the, to their apartment that they uh, left during the war, everything was robbed out and uh, they kind of understood that them being Jewish is not a good thing for others to know. So, so they tried to live their life as the, the surrounding and I, f and I felt that this, her Jewishness, was, her roots were stolen from her. She grew up all of her life kind of hiding this okay. and then suddenly me telling about my faith woke up something in her she found like an old prayer book of the Karaiti and she started reading this I started telling her more about the, the Bible and this and and eventually she ended up accepting Jesus really? both her and my my grandfather it was, wow. it was a wow. long process uh, it's still she's still in the process but it was amazing for me to see that and her accepting him was even more meaningful than myself because for her it was like this heritage that was stolen from her yeah. is given back to her and uh... oh my goodness <laughs> so you have you have this jewish grandmother mm -hmm. who has really no connection with her jewish roots puts her faith in the jewish messiah mm -hmm. and regains all of her jewish identity back yeah incredible yeah. incredible mm -hmm. thank you thank you for, for sharing that with me wow wow um, I, I always love the stories when it's when someone comes to faith, they're the first generation believer, and then they see those in their family come to faith. It's like a dream for me, a dream for everyone. So with your amazing talent, what are you doing now? Well, now, now I work uh, as an animator, uh, but it's interesting because for, for, uh, for a time uh, after I uh, found God or He found me, I felt suddenly that there was so much selfishness in all of my uh, process about doing art that was all about me and shouting to the world somebody love me and then I found the source of love I found uh, found him and I felt that I don't need this anymore I put it aside for a uh, for a point of time I put uh, uh, art and drawing and all this because I didn't uh, didn't want this to define who I am mm -hmm. and uh, and he uh, he used this time to deepen my knowledge of the Bible more to deepen me in, in faith and then suddenly uh, as a result of hearing a testimony of another artist, Rick Wienicke from Arad, and hearing his testimony talking about the connection between Holocaust and, uh, and uh, Yeshua, suddenly this feeling of, uh, I want this experience, I want to dedicate the work of my, uh, my hands, I want to dedicate my art to God, and I want this, ex uh, this experience of working under His guidance so badly. I was sitting there and weeping in the room while He was telling the, the testimony, and, uh, and I just said, well, God, if it's from You, I, I, I want to do it. I don't want to dig the, the gift in, in the ground, the talent. And uh, I, I got accepted to Betzalel, which is uh, Israel's most famous art academy uh, wow. by his grace not by mine but I finished the studies there I studied animation and screen-based arts and today I have a pleasure of working with Jews for Jesus as an animator we work on a anim uh, series of animation uh, films about uh, Yeshua about the Bible about its relevance in today's Israeli society we try to make it whoa 
in an artistic way which is approachable for uh, for the society in which we live so for me it's a great great pleasure yeah the videos are incredible so I'm gonna link those down in the description so you can see them all and um, wow thank you for sharing that um, if you like this kind of content leave a comment like the video and subscribe to the channel and we'll continue posting more testimonies like this one thank you Dima for sharing your story I appreciate you and uh, thank you for watching and if you're Jewish out there and you also have put your faith in Yeshua you can send us a message down in the description we have our email we'd love to hear from you take care and God bless you all